on today's Question of Faith, Why do Protestants pray the Our Father? Hey everybody, this is Question of Faith. I am Mike Hayes. I am the Director of Young Adult Ministry in the Diocese of Cleveland. And I'm Father Damien Ferenc, the Vicar for Evangelization. Hi everyone, I'm Brooke Uline, the Communications Manager for the Diocese. Welcome back, Brooke. Thank you. Thanks and, for having me. Yeah, let's be honest. Hey, this was your question that you <laughs> that you wrote into me the other day, and I said, hey, let's just talk about this in the podcast. Yeah, yeah, sure. So um, maybe some of the other listeners out there are using the Halo app. I use it. That's part of my morning routine for prayer life. That's H-A-L-L-O-W, correct? Yes. Thank you. And um, if you're doing it right now, you may have noticed there's a 33-day Marian consecration. And I want to say on day like three or four, there was a, a whole, um, it was focused on the Lord's Prayer, but the the one that's in Matthew, Mm-hmm. Gospel mm-hmm. of Matthew, because right. so it Matthew appears and, twice. It's in so Matthew and Luke, yes. Yeah. Um, and so briefly, um, the moderator mentioned that, you know, this is prayed in other denominations and how sacred and how we uphold it as we were going about breaking down the meaning of what Jesus is saying. And so that made me kind of take a step back in my life my mom did not convert to Catholicism until I was in middle school. Mm. And I may have shared this in the past, but my sister and I would wake up early, go to Sunday school, go to Baptist service with my mom, be home by 1130 to make it to noon mass with my dad, and then go to PSR on Monday nights. (laughs) But I remember that was the one consistent thing. We did the Lord's Prayer at the worship service in the morning with my mom, and then we had it again at Mass, and you prayed it at Sunday school, and you prayed it at PSR. So I just thought, huh, well, are there any other prayers that are in the Bible? I was, you know, um, thinking about some of our Marian prayers that other, um, you know, religious pray, um, other Other, other Christians, other Christians, thank you, other Christians pray. Or is it just the Lord's Prayer, and why is it, you know, and I, I think there's even like a little bit of a variation towards the end of the prayer. So sure, yeah, Protestants will. I hope will, that kind of helps. Yeah, Protestants will often pray that piece, you know, uh, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. That You know, we yes. say after um, an, yeah. an additional prayer the priest would say after the Our Father. So. Right, right. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So our Father, you know, the first thing that I thought of was, well, Jesus taught us to pray that way, and we all believe in Jesus, mm-hmm. and so why wouldn't you know? That's probably why we would all pray that prayer. All Christians would pray that prayer, in particular. Um, as someone who was a sports chaplain, they they would often use that in sort of interfaith settings, not even just ecumenical settings. You know, between by the way, if, if you don't know what the difference between that is, ecumenical is between other Christians. Interfaith would be beyond Christianity; would be other other Christians, other um, religious besides Christians, Jews, Muslims, etc. Um, but in, even in interfaith spaces, they would sometimes pray the Our Father, which mm-hmm. I found odd since mm-hmm. it's yeah you know, clearly a Christian prayer. But people seem to resonate with it, so I don't know. But yeah. but why do we think Protestants, uh, you know, along with Catholics, have a you know have an affinity for this prayer in particular? I guess. Well, I would agree with what you just said, Mike. This teach us to pray, and this is how Jesus taught his mm-hmm. disciples to pray. So mm-hmm. we're his disciples today, and so that's the prayer that we share. Also, historically, uh, Protestants became very suspicious of. Marian devotion Mm. and started to see it as idolatry or worship of Our Lady rather than an honoring or a reverence of um, Our Lady. And so they don't participate in the Marian prayers, even though many of them are ancient. And, you know, the Hail Mary, the first part of it is right from Luke's gospel. Mm -hmm. Um, I was thinking, though, that the Jesus prayer, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner, is a pretty common prayer among Christians, yeah, although true. probably most common with Catholic and Orthodox, um, and especially the Byzantine Catholics, Ruthenian and, and a Ukrainian. I, mean, I wear a little chotki my friend Mother Natalia made me, and you, you pray the Jesus prayer on these 33 knots, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And each knot is made up of 
eight knots, which is the St. Anthony knot that the devil can't untie. Mm. So that's a prayer. Uh, And I was also thinking of other prayers prayed in common. And although at first we wouldn't think of these as prayers, but thanks to St. Augustine, we do. He who uh, sings once prays twice. So there's a lot of hymns Mm. that we share in common. Amazing Amazing grace, grace, right? Um, Now thank um, we all our God. I've heard in Protestant circles before. uh, Yeah. mm -hmm. I I did not create a list in my mind, but we could probably go through even for young people. Contemporary praise and worship. Um, your gra- your grace is mm-hmm. enough. Yeah, I mean, Matt Marr wrote mm-hmm. that song. It's mm-hmm. based on you know Paul's letter, mm-hmm. and young people and old older people like to sing these songs together. So these are common prayers that we pray together. Maybe they're not they're they're inspired by scripture. They're not taken exactly from scripture, but some of these uh, other hymns and songs are. So I think there's a wide variety of prayers and hymns that uh, Catholics and non-Catholic Christians pray together. Yeah. I was even thinking like when I was thumbing through, so that they make us canter in deacon formation. Oh, wow. And um, so you you have to come up with the songs, which is good because then you pick the ones that you can sing. (laughs) Um, And I was going through the hymnal the other day and and I found a couple that said shaker song, you know, Mm -hmm. of shaker origin. So I was Mm -hmm. like, oh, there you go. And Mm -hmm. so I was like, oh, I have to remember that for the podcast. So thanks for the reminder. Do you remember which, I I know that I've seen that in the little liner notes um, in the book, but I don't know what the shaker song is. Tis a gift to be simple. Tis a gift to be simple. Tis a gift to be free. Yeah. Right. Right on. That's it. That's exactly how it goes, Brooke. That's great. Um, yeah, so I mean, there, there's all those kinds of things, and then I think, um, you know, I mean, Episcopalians are fairly close to to Catholicism, so we probably have a little bit more in common with them. I know I've been to an Episcopal. My aunt is an Episcopalian deacon, as a matter of fact, hmm. and um, so I, I went to her ordination, and I've gone to her church on occasion when I've when I visited her, um, and. It's very similar to, you know, there are a lot of things that are said at Mass there that are similar to what we've said, not maybe not exactly the same, but but pretty close, I would say. So there's, you know, there's a lot of similarities, I would say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't even know this when I asked, um, you know, about the, this question specifically, but in it should be hitting mailboxes within the next five to seven days. Mm. But the next issue of the September-October Northeast Ohio Catholic mm-hmm. Magazine, there is actually a column that somebody wrote in to Father Joe C- Krupp, who I believe is from Michigan somewhere and mm-hmm. does these kind of like syndicated yeah, Q&A yeah. A yeah. advice columns. Um, but he had, someone asks a little bit different of a question, but but also about the Our Father and what are the exact words that are, that are ah. different. And then also another good question he had the same person had was about the Ten Commandments. So I won't take us down that route, but, <laughs> but <it was laughs> apparently there's a little bit of difference there. So, you know, and most of it's just wording, not necessarily, there's still ten, but it's sort of how we word. Or, sure. And it appears in both Matthew and Luke, so it yeah. probably comes from the Q source then. You know, they, they share a source that they call Q, which basically means source, you know, and, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, and so what you find in Matthew, you often find in Luke, and the things that you find together are usually from that one source. Yeah. Um, and so in this case, um, that's probably where it comes from. Yeah, yeah. But I would say as a child, I mean, that was always a comfort, right? Knowing that, you know, until obviously until my mom did convert, we still had this very similar hmm. humbling moment of prayer that – my sister and I were praying with my mom and then with my dad, mm-hmm. you know, or with our classmates, Right. you know, so I don't know. I have two other thoughts on the Our Father that are related. One is that I was told by a few people that the origin of the handholding during the Our Father at Mass emerged from 12-step programs. Oh, sure. That Mm -hmm. many 12-step programs would end by praying the Lord's Prayer and holding hands. And that that eventually, after the Second Vatican Council, made its way into Catholic liturgy. But it's interesting, in our diocese, you'll notice that many people 
assume the this could be its own podcast show, like what should we do with our hands during the Our Father? And uh, the liturgists that were that were in the diocese 20 years ago um, thought that the most proper posture to pray during the Our Father was to imitate what the priest does with the hands in the Oran's position, because if you go to the catacombs in Rome, a lot of those saints who are painted on the walls have their hands open mm. like this, and this is how they say the early Christians prayed. So that's why you'll see more of the Oran's position when people pray the Our Father at Mass today in our diocese than the hand-holding. Mm. And um, since this is radio, Father Damien had his hands held up about shoulder length, uh, you know, like yeah, a touchdown sure. symbol yeah, almost. Yeah. You know? <laughs> now some, like a lower. Father, a Mark, lower, Father yeah. Mark Ott, mm-hmm. who's a scripture scholar at the seminary, in his own research, um, he when he, celebra- he celebrates Mass, his hands are up like oh. this, almost reaching up to the Father. Um, and that's come out of his own study and his own prayer. That, oh. So people hold their hands differently. It's so interesting, too, because I feel like a lot of Hispanics, my father included, he is a touchdown (laughs) he's a full Mm -hmm. out arm up in the air you know so i always just thought maybe it was cultural i don't know but but maybe not he probably attended a retreat or something along the way and yeah probably some of that you know the curcio movement in particular i would say that they certainly um had that tradition for a long time yeah maybe that's why my dad went through that and it's interesting that you say, you know, hands up or, you know, or way up or mm-hmm. whatever. My hands are often out, you know, mm. almost palms up, mm-hmm. you know, when, when mm-hmm. I when I hold my hands up for our father. If my wife is with me, she she holds one of my hands and, my, and our other hand is out. But mm-hmm. um, we figure we should do that while we can because soon I'll be up on the altar, God willing, and she'll be in the pew by yeah. herself. So yeah. I said, let's hold hands while we still can. Yeah. Um, another thought came to me as you were mentioning in the Hispanic community how the mm-hmm. hands go up. I've been celebrating Mass recently in Spanish. It's good enough for a valid oh. Mass. I have a deacon preach. But during the elevations, uh, there's often like the my Lord and my God mm, and, and yes. hands are up yes. and, and singing. And that moment, according to the rubric, is a time of adoration. And that adoration is vocal in the Hispanic mm-hmm. parishes. Yes. yes. So yeah. When I went to Central America, that was something that was new for me. I, we went to Mass and all of a sudden the priest elevated the host and you heard everybody. Mm-hmm. Saying so, and and we I couldn't quite tell what they were saying, and so then we had mass back at the orphanage we were at, and the priest um, was saying mass, and he held up the host, and as he held up the host, he whispered to me, he goes, "This is the part where everyone says, my Lord and my God," mm-hmm. and so he almost mm-hmm. expected a response mm-hmm. from us, and so he taught us how to you know, how to say that in Spanish and everything mm-hmm. else, which was fun. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. The second thought I had about the Our Father was. That back in 2017, Bruce Springsteen started a run on Broadway. It's called Springsteen on Broadway. It's, it's on Netflix if you it, haven't seen it. Oh, really? It is. It's about two and a half hours long. And what he does is he takes you through his life, which is basically his book. He wrote right. a book called Born to Run. Uh, also and good. he inserts 12 to 13 songs within this narrative so he's he's telling a story then he sings a song uh, he opens it with growing up and then he does uh, my home t- my hometown and he goes through his whole life basically and if you haven't seen it well i'm going to give you a little spoiler so close your ears here but at the end of the whole show he's back in his neighborhood on randolph street and the tree that was once there isn't there and his friends like clarence clemens has, has died danny federici his 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 uh, dad, his grandparents. And he said, uh, he said, it it came back to me. He said, I didn't know exactly what to do. And then he uses a couple colorful words to describe his Catholic (laughs) education. And he said, every morning at St. Rose of Lima Grammar School, we would chant this thing unceasingly, endingly, boring. But he said, on this day, it seemed like the perfect benediction and the perfect words. And then he says, our father who art in heaven. And then he just, he closes the show pretty much yeah. praying the Our Father oh, at the, nice. the uh, what is it, Alan Kerr Theater or something, Kerr mm-hmm. Theater. Yes. And then he, I think he goes into Born to Run at the, ver- the, with the what would be like the encore at the end. But it was so moving. There were 923 seats in that theater. Um, I was able to be there on the second night of the show. It was fall break. I went by myself, wow. still grieving my dad's loss. And uh, that was a, a very important moment in my life because every night, the boss is praying the Our Father with all these people, and people got it. They're like, "Yeah, that's a perfect prayer. Like, yeah. you're not going to get better than that prayer. Mm-hmm. It's great." Mm-hmm. 
So, yeah, and even people who – what's nice about, like, memorized prayers is people who have been away from the church for a long, long time, um, they can get back in it right away. Like, I can mm-hmm. pray that prayer. Mm-hmm. I got that one. Have, okay. have you ever noticed at Mass – you probably have noticed this. I, I certainly have. Wherever I have been at Mass, people generally respond kind of softly in general. You know, the end of the first reading, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you know, holy, holy, holy Lord, mm-hmm. God of power. My, you know, and people just kind of are going through the motions, except for the Our Father. Mm-hmm. The Our Father people belt that out. You know? <laughs> I mean, That's cool. Yeah. Maybe it's because it it's true. outside of Mass. You can say yeah. it and you're really comfortable with it because the other prayers you're pretty much only doing at Mass, you know? So right. you're like, I got this one. All right, I got this one. Right. You know? well, and some of it's probably childhood, too, when you mm-hmm. think about it, right? It's probably the first mm-hmm. prayer you ever learned. It's the first right. prayer I ever learned. Well, that's what I, I was guess. thinking. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and everyone knows it. I mean, yeah. you don't even have to be school-aged, right? Three- and four-year-olds, right. they know – if they don't know the whole thing, they know the beginning. They yeah. probably know the end. People who are nominally middle. religious even, I would say, mm-hmm. would, would know the Our Father. At, at least would be somewhat familiar. They might have a stumble or two if they haven't said it in a while. Mm-hmm. But in general, I think most people know the Our Father. So there's that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a great prayer. Cool. Yeah. And, and if you haven't done this uh, – I have a priest friend who will give us a penance, and I think he gives it to everybody. One, Our Father, pray it very slowly, because mm-hmm. it's easy to go on autopilot, Our Father, Our Father. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I had another thought, too. Yeah. So I get around to a lot of parishes in the diocese, so I'll often, before Mass starts, go visit the music minister and see what they're playing. And and then I'll ask, do you chant the Our Father or no? And I'm like, well, we normally don't, but if you want to. And so people are pretty apt to singing it, too, if you... Yeah. Our Father, you know, and they, mm-hmm. they'll jump right in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There, there are people who really get bent out of shape about that, too. They, like, if you do really? or don't. Or if you don't. Like, if, if, oh. if, it's, if it's done there regularly and you just say it, they'll be like, hey, we chant to Our Father mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. You know? It's funny. <laughs> it's, it's like they almost have a, like, a little chip on their shoulder, you know, daring you to <laughs> knock it off, you know. And they're like, you know, no, here we, we chant the Our Father. Don't even think about saying it, you know. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, there, I found this during the pandemic, and I screenshot it on my phone, so I'm, I'm not exactly sure the Instagram handle I found it on, but it takes each section of the prayer yeah. and and then gives you some meaning behind it and really breaks it down. And that's sort of what the Hello app was doing as well that day. Um, but that's really helpful, and sometimes I feel like I'll go back to that if I, you know, as I'm praying it to be like, okay, wait, I'm my mind's still wandering. Yeah. I need to really focus on mm-hmm what this means my you know, friend what Andre- I'm doing. my friend andrea gave a retreat talk one time and she sort of broke down the our father and she said you know she said it's great that we all say sort of the literal words that jesus said she goes i don't think that's what he was getting at she said i don't think he was getting hey please repeat all these words all the time i think what he was saying was when you pray remind yourself that god is holy that we're trying to make god's kingdom come on earth god please feed us Mm-hmm. Forgive us our sins, but only as we forgive others who've sinned against us, and and keep us safe, you know, from from all harm. Yeah, okay. and that's where I would recommend when you do get the magazine, if you get the magazine, read it because it actually breaks down some of that origin, saying like it goes back to like a Jewish structure and how they mm-hmm. prayed. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I don't know, very we'll, interesting. Anyway, we'll put a link to that. Yeah, and that the. Uh, the a, a, a big twist in what Jesus did in teaching us to pray and calling God Father, the translation is more like dad or daddy, like yeah. calling Abba the affectionate mm-hmm. um, term of of relation mm-hmm. with, with uh, one's father. That, that's very tender, too. Mm-hmm. I was thinking, as you were talking to in, in uh, Springsteen on Broadway, he says, <laughs> give us this day, just this day. Mm-hmm. And he really, you know, he breaks it down a little bit. It's One cool. day at a time. Yeah. Yeah. The, the other thing, too, I think... Um, We'll close out on this. I think the um, guys who have done prison ministry, who, who I've been friendly with, have said that uh, it really resonates with a lot of guys in prison because a lot of guys in prison have grown up without fathers. Mm-hmm. And they said they, that they really believe that Jesus really knew what he was doing when he said, no, no, when, when you pray, say our father. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so because so many people just don't have that model, mm-hmm. and now they do mm-hmm. if they think mm-hmm. of it in that way. So, cool. Mm-hmm. All right. Well. 
this has been this has been great. You know, thanks for the question, Brooke. Yeah, thanks for having me. And Church Search is going to go to St. Clarence in North Olmsted. Um, hey, if you haven't speak in prison ministry, <laughs> Father Neil Kakuthi is in prison ministry for a long time mm-hmm. and worked with people on death row and. Uh, Ordination yeah. class in 1995. He was in his last year of seminary when I was in my first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we did our grandparents' workshop. That was the was that the last one we did. It right? was, was at St. Clarence. Yeah. And what I remember about it, I remember the church, but I remember more striking was walking in. I don't know where they got them, but there were all those old statues. Oh that yeah, kind of lining the walkway, and they were very striking. I thought. Yeah, um, yeah. I took a cool. bunch of Instagram photos there. I'll mm-hmm. see if I can dig those up on my Instagram account. And put those up. Mm-hmm. That's great. All right. And then our gospel for this coming week. Uh, great crowds were, this is from Luke's gospel. Great crowds are traveling with Jesus, and he turned and addressed them. If anyone comes to me without hating his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Ooh. Stop the hate. <laughs> no, Jesus is speaking hy- hyperbolically here. He's, he wants to be number one. And yeah. if you love him first, then you'll be able to love your mother and father and your family mm. members well. But I like how he uses hyperbole to shake it up. Yeah. That, that yeah. makes me happy. What gets in the way of, of loving Jesus is what I often say. You know, does your mm-hmm. wife get in the way? Does your mother or father get in the way? You know, what gets in the way is what he's trying to get at, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, just a quick update on our pod. Yeah, you know, we've got about 200 to 300 loyal listeners every week, which is awesome. a great audience. Yeah. You know, I, I talked to some folks who work in radio. And I said, is that good? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, what do I know? You know? And they're like, yeah, you know, th- this is about loyalty. They said it's not about, you know, like large, giant broadcasting kind of numbers. And you know, they said, but you're about trying to carve out a loyal audience. So we just mm. wanted to thank you all for being so loyal. Um, yeah, thank you. It's been great. Um, and so if you have a question of faith, you can get that to us uh, by emailing me. And it's mhayes at dioceseofcleveland.org. Uh, Theology on Tap is coming up, which is on September 20th. It's going to be at Forest City Brewery, which is just uh, in Duck Island there, right down the street from St. Wendelin mm-hmm. Parish. Uh, Father Damien and I will be there with I'm going. Bishop Malasek. Oh, you're going. Me and yeah. Ryan are going. We secured a babysitter. We're awesome. really excited. <laughs> so Bishop Molesic, the Bishop of Cleveland, will be our guest, and we'll and it will be sort of like this. We'll sort of interview, and we'll probably rebroadcast some of this on this podcast. You know, we'll probably get two or three little questions out of that, I think, yeah. at least, you know. And uh, basically that's what he's going to be doing. He's going to be answering some questions that uh, that we'll pose to him. Bishop Molesic is an excellent listener, he and is. he's a really good interview, and he's a very insightful man. So it's fun to have him. And if you've never l- heard him or met him, come on out, um, and you could meet him in person. But if you can't, um, yeah, keep tuning in, and you'll hear him on this show. Yeah, he was on this podcast last week from the Fest mm-hmm. uh, you know, for a, a short one, so I'll sort of preview what's coming up. Um, but, yeah, he'll be out at Forest City Brewery with us. So come out and have a pint on Bishop Molesic and mm-hmm. – uh, Will be that'll be fun. I'll um, drink the pint after the interview. I think. <laughs> exactly. All right, Bishop. Let me ask you one more question. Yeah. Um, and then we have our first young adult retreat that's coming up. It's going to be in October. Uh, it's going to be October. I'm always going to get the date wrong, so I'm going to make sure I look. 14 to 16 at the Jesuit Retreat Center. Uh, you can sign up for that already on our webpage, and I'll be sending out a new newsletter this week that will detail all of that. I'll put it in the show notes as well. And so we'll, we got a lot going on as the fall starts to come into full swing. So we're happy for you being here with us on Question of Faith. Mm-hmm.